We are here with Susan Erickson, who is the 2008 Teacher of the Year for the Center Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Well, first, uh, tell us a little bit about where you teach and, and what you teach. I teach at Oak Hill Elementary School. We're in Antelope, and I teach fourth grade. I've taught fourth grade there for eight years. Okay. So tell me, what does it mean to you to be named as a Teacher of the Year? It's quite an honor. It's a little bit of, um, I think teachers tend to be humble. I have so many people that I work with that are wonderful. And there's a lot of teachers that got me to this place. I learned from a lot of teachers. But it is quite an honor to represent Center. This is our 150th birthday year, so it's a big year for Center Unified. Well, tell me about your classroom and, and some of the things that you do uh, to kind of reach out to your students. This year I have 32 fourth graders. I typically have 31 to 32 students. My fourth graders are an energetic bunch of learners and so I want to keep that energy and I want to channel it into learning all the things they need to learn by fourth grade um, to be great fifth graders. There's a lot that they need to do in mathematics and reading and science and they're very excited to come in and it's amazing. They realize they're not third graders anymore at the other end of campus and there's a lot that's expected of them this year. And, and fourth grade is kind of a, a transitional year where the expectations are greater. In the younger grades, you know, the students will get the homework packet with everything spelled out, but now there's more responsibility. A lot of responsibility. The fourth graders are getting used to the word binder and that a binder has five sections and they need to keep their binders organized. Uh, fourth grade is where they have homework each night. It's um, indicative of what they need to learn. Lessons that aren't completed that day so can sometimes become homework. And then we also differentiate for what the fourth graders do. So strugglers might be working on things that are um, remedial in mathematics. We have students that are working in challenge um, activities in mathematics. So it is a big year and they really do feel like they're, they're big kids. And for our fourth graders, they actually move to the other side of campus. So it's like, okay, wow, I'm with the fifth graders. I'm a big kid now. Are there any specific challenges that, that you face as a teacher every day or maybe teachers in general that face in the classroom? I think teachers in general, the more, the higher grade level you teach, sometimes the more grade levels you're teaching. We do find students that struggle, um, even though they're a fourth grader, they're, some of their skills are still in second grade. I have students that their skills are in sixth grade. So you've got to try to meet all the needs, whether it's remediation, trying to scaffold so that they can learn or excelling them and advancing them, taking them forward. What about uh, teachers in general? What do you think are some of the, sp the specific challenges that the teachers throughout the country face? I think teachers sometimes, I know with my school, we're just wondering time, how to fit in everything within that school day and making every minute count. So managing time and also managing the other things that go on within the school. You have assemblies and field trips and you want to keep the fun in school. You want to keep the PE and the art and all that going. But then it's those instructional minutes, making sure every minute counts is a challenge. Now how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching 20 years, most of it as a fourth grade teacher. Oh, okay. So it, it must be pretty rewarding uh, to be in the classroom that long. It is. And it's funny, even though it's only been 20 years, I'm looking to do another 12. I've got some, my own children I have to get through college. But it becomes not just a job. If you really are a teacher who loves what they do, it's a passion and profession. You want to, you just live learning and you bring all of that love of learning into your classroom. It is your life to be a teacher. How do you see um, education in the 20 years that you've been in the business has changed quite a bit? It has. So where do you see education going? Where do you see changes in the field? Um, I see changes in the field making more use of technology, especially the internet. Sometimes it's, we're asking the children to learn more about history, to go more out into the world and learning about the world and bringing that world into the classroom. And you can do that with technology and with the internet. I see the students too using computers more wanting to do things on computers. So even though we ask that our students write things out in longhand, it's amazing what they will compose when they have a computer. They'll up their vocabulary because spell check. Sometimes they won't want to write because their spelling is going to stop them from using that word. Word processing, spell checks, fix it for them, and off they go. It doesn't stop their stream of learning and their thinking. So I think technology is going to change that and more classes available to students on the internet. I know that students, get what we can do are high school classes. Some students do that through the internet. They also can get college degrees through the internet. I see now elementary students being able to tap into, hopefully, classes that will extend their learning as an elementary student through classes over the internet. And especially all the resources that they would have available yes. to mm -hmm. them. Now, what inspired you to be a teacher? What made you decide? 
When I was younger, I had great teachers, and I think a lot of teachers will share that same story. There's always somebody that just stood out to you. I had a teacher in fifth grade that read the entire Little House on the Prairie books. Now, for the boys, I thought they, th they probably thought it was boring. For me, I just was there with Laura Ingalls. I was living on the prairie, and I just remember, too, she was an older teacher, so she wasn't full of all the cute bells and whistles. She was strict, but she just made that whole thing real for me. And so she still stands out as the reason why I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to learn, wanted to take people places, wanted to experience things and bring it into a classroom. What are some of the things that you do in your classroom to try to you know, motivate your students and inspire them? Maybe some different things that you do, little tricks maybe? Yeah, I like to have my students be active players in whatever I do. So we brainstorm all sorts of things they want to learn. And if they want, they can convince me that's something they need to learn, let's go. We're doing a um, project on risks and consequences. One of my students wants to study the risks and consequences of being an emperor penguin researcher. Came up with that on her own. She loves emperor penguin. She wants to be able to go to Antarctica. Let's go on the internet. There's your technology. Let's go there and find out what are the living conditions of the emperor penguin. Can we find out some researchers that are there? What is going on with people that are living there, studying any kind of wildlife in Antarctica? And so that's what she's designed. I'm fully 100% behind her. I have some students that are trying to show me glacier movements. They're bringing in ice blocks and we're melting them. So we want to see how glaciers affect the, um, a stream table. They want to just look at erosion and deposition. So if they want to design it, let's go, we'll do that. Well, what do you do for those students who are a little more difficult to motivate those are challenges for all teachers. So one thing I think that's real important is you've got to let that student know you like them. That there's not a reason, that there's not a relationship problem with you as far as why that student can't learn. If that student knows you're in their corner, you like them, they'll be more receptive to little things that you can, you can design for them. Sometimes it's just those compliments or those thumbs up, you're doing okay, you're doing okay. You're doing it. You're going to get problem two right. You set them up for problem two. You're going to get it right. I think you can share problem four with the class. So those little things can get a student to believe, I can do this. She does like me. I can make it in fourth grade. So you've got 32 students in your classroom, 32 individuals with all individual issues or concerns or whatever. So what you're trying to do is you've got a plan but it's at the same time you've got to almost compartmentalize it. Yes, and you know what, a big part of my plan is parents. I'm very fortunate that at Oak Hill Elementary School we have a cadre of parents that are there that like to come into the schools. And so we have parents that sign up, they do fluency with our students, they'll sit at the back of the room, remediate with students. They know, the parents know how important it is not to just have their child succeed, but all children succeed, and the children love it that so-and-so's mom's going to help me read today. So-and-so's mom's going to sit and make sure I finish my test. Okay, so-and-so's mom's going to help me practice my subtraction. So I have five parents that come into my classroom. On a, they come in and rotating each week. They come in on a certain day, perform certain tasks, and they're very important to the success of my class. And the parental influence at home as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Let me ask, what would you say to those, those people out there who are considering teaching as a profession? And what would you say you know, to convince them that it's something that they should strongly consider? If you love to learn anything, love to just, you know, learning is your life, then that passion you need to bring into the classroom because that's what students need today is someone who wants to be there. And I think there's a lot of people that make great teachers, but they always feel that the hours are horrible or the pay is horrible. If you really have a passion to be there, hours and pay isn't what's going to stop you from being a good teacher. You need to be in there and do the job. You'll find it's the most rewarding place to be. You'll find a lot of teachers have spent 30, 40 years. They'll stay to 40 year level. And it's because that's where they want to be. They cannot see themselves without helping someone learn new things, taking people on learning journeys. Uh, teachers don't get in it for the money, do they? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's for the satisfaction? It is. It's for the satisfaction. It's a love. It has to be a true passion. It's a profession. It's not a job. It is your life to be a teacher. Well, congratulations again on being named the Teacher of the Year for the Center Unified School District. We have been speaking with Susan Erickson. Congratulations. Thank you very much.